Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I am going to explain you congestion control in TCP. And before we start with explanation, let me tell you how many things that I am going to cover in this video. See, first I will explain you how many basics are there for congestion control in TCP. After that, I will explain you congestion control algorithm in TCP. There are three stages. I will explain you all three stages in great detail along with one practical example. So here I am going to consider one example by which I will explain you that algorithm. After that, I will consider one practical example as case study in which I will show you practically how exactly congestion control happens in TCP. So let us start with basics of congestion control in TCP. When we discuss about basics of congestion control in TCP, then you should know congestion control that happens at network layer as well. If you have seen my previous videos based on network layer, in that also I have told you how congestion control happens. See, when it comes to network layer, then congestion control that can be done by ICMP protocol. I have explained ICMP protocol in great detail. You just go through my video based on that. It is available in computer network lecture series in which I have explained you how congestion control happens. You should know with ICMP protocol, we can control congestion at single router only. For example, here we are having network in which this source is transmitting data to this destination. And in that, as if I say with this router, if there is a congestion in that case, with the use of ICMP protocol, ICMP ICMP frame that is getting forwarded to source which indicates there is a congestion in this router. So, this router cannot forward data over here to this destination. So, that is how ICMP that was controlling congestion, right? But when it comes to transport layer, at that time congestion control that we do it with the use of TCP. Now, in TCP, how, how do we control congestion? See, here, when it comes to TCP, then you should know TCP is functioning at transport layer and here we will be doing congestion control with process. So, end to end congestion that we are controlling. With network layer, with the use of ICMP protocol, we can control congestion with single router only. But when it comes to TCP congestion control, at that time, we control congestion of complete network. And to control that congestion in complete network, here at source side, we will be scaling window size. So here, see with source, there will be window, right? There will be source window and this window size that we will be scaling for congestion control. Now you might be thinking like, why should we control that scaling of window size? See. This window size explains what? This window size explains this source can transmit data based on this window. If this window size that is large, then this source can transmit large amount of data on this network. So here for congestion control, what we will be doing is we will be controlling size of this window. Lower the size means lower the data transmission over here. Higher the size means higher the data transmission over here. So, we will be scaling size based on that we will be scaling data transmission over here and by which we can control congestion. Let me explain you first how algorithm is there with TCP for congestion control. Congestion control algorithm in TCP is having three stages. First stage that is slow start phase. Second stage that is congestion avoidance phase. And third stage that is continuously congestion detection phase. See here congestion means what? Congestion means your data is not getting transmitted successfully. And as and when your data is not getting transmitted successfully, at that time what we were been doing? We were been doing retransmission. If you have seen my last video based on retransmission, in that I have told you there are two techniques by which retransmission happens. One is based on timeout retransmission and second is based on duplicate acknowledgement. So here there will be three acknowledgement technique by which there can be retransmission, right? 
So retransmission requires as and when there is a congestion. Congestion means what? Your data is not getting forwarded successfully. It means there is some issue in network, right? So here in network, there are multiple issues which is possible. And because of that, your frame may not be reached over here at destination, right? It means there is a congestion. And in that situation, what we were been doing? We were been doing retransmission. And along with that, here we are doing congestion control. So congestion control means what? Here, transmission of data, transmission of data from source to destination that we are scaling. And that scaling that we do it by controlling window size at source side, right? So here, in general, there are three stages. First stage, that is slow start phase, in which we will be initiating window size of sender with minimal value. That could be one or two. Gradually, we will be increasing it. Here, that window size of source that we will be growing exponentially. See, congestion window, that will be the window size of sender and that we will be growing exponentially in slow start phase. Then second phase comes in which congestion avoidance will be happening, in which we will be increasing congestion window by one. And then here third phase comes, which indicates there is congestion or not. So here we will be detecting congestion. And as if congestion is getting detected, then there are two possibilities. One is based on timeouts. I have already told you, right? See, there could be two reasons by which we can identify frame is not transmitted successfully. One is based on timeout and second is based on three duplicate acknowledgement. So here, if any one of those two issues are arising, then how to tackle that issue? That is what the case which I am going to explain you by one practical example. So let us see that example first. So that will give you more clarity. So to initiate with example, there are few basic things that you need to understand. See here what we are doing, we are scaling window size of sender. So here we are having one sender and one destination. Here we will be scaling window size of sender. For that, let me assume few data. Here you see in connection establishment of TCP, we will be defining window size first. So in connection establishment, sender window size and receiver window size that we initialize, right? Let us assume it is 64 KB initially and maximum segment size that is 1 KB. So one segment is having 1 KB size. So in window, how many segments are possible as per 64 KB? 64 segments are possible. So here for simplicity, what I'm doing is I'm considering this calculation in terms of segments instead of size of data, right? So I'm not going to calculate that in terms of KB. Right now, I'll explain you that in layman terms so that you can understand that in a better way. So for simplicity, I'll consider segment size that is equals to 1 KB. And here initially, see this congestion window that will be one or two. See, there are some TCP protocols in which they may consider congestion window initially by two. But for simplicity, I'll be considering congestion window that is equals to one segment initially, right? So let us assume congestion window that is equals to one. See, sender window size that will be receiver window size or congestion window size. And we need to select minimum of these two. So initially congestion window that is equals to 1 and receiver window that is having 64 KB means 64 segments are there. So initially we will be considering WS is equals to 1. Now once you consider WS is equals to 1, here this sender is having sender window size that is equals to 1 as per congestion window size is equals to 1 and it will be forwarding one segment. Once it forwards one segment, it will be waiting for acknowledgement. If this segment is received by this destination successfully, then it will give acknowledgement. And based on acknowledgement, the sender will get to know this one segment that is received by destination successfully. Once this sender knows one segment that is received by destination successfully, what sender will do is sender will multiply this congestion window by two. So congestion window right now that is one. 
if you multiply that by 2, so it will become 2. So now congestion window size that is 2 and sender window size that should be minimum of receiver window or congestion window. So now sender window that will become 2. 64 or 2 minimum of that is 2 right now. So now the sender will forward 2 segments, right? Sender will forward 2 segments. Here I cannot draw 2 lines, otherwise, this graph will become bit tedious in terms of uh, watching it, right? So I'm just writing it like right now the sender have forward 2 segments over here. Now, as if 2 segments are forwarded over here, and after that, this destination is giving acknowledgement, then sender will get to know two segments are received by destination successfully. So again, the sender will do what? Sender will multiply this congestion window by two. So now it will become four. And sender window size, that will be minimum of receiver and congestion window. So now sender window will become four and it will forward four segments over here. After forwarding four segments, it will be waiting for acknowledgement. If acknowledgement is received successfully by sender, then sender will get to know there is no congestion in the network. And what it will do? It will multiply congestion window by two. Now it will become eight. And now sender window size, that will be minimum of receiver window and congestion window. So now it will become eight over here. Now it will forward eight segments, right? And it will wait for acknowledgement. See, it will, the sender will repeat this process until threshold value of congestion window. So, what is the threshold value of congestion window initially? Threshold value of congestion window, that will be receiver window divided by 2. So, that will be 64 by 2. So, that is 32. So, you see, initially sender window size, how it was getting scaled. Initially, it was 1. Then, it was getting multiplied by 2. It becomes 2. Then it was multiplied by 4, it becomes 8, then 16, then 32. Now you see threshold value that is 32. So multiplication that will happen up to threshold only, right? So up to 32, this sender window size that is getting scaled by multiplication factor. And this is what we are referring as slow start. So slow start means what? Here we will be starting congestion window with 1. Then we will be multiplying, multiplying it by 2 till this threshold. Once it reaches to threshold, then you can say this complete process that belongs to slow start. So you see, I have told you there are three phases. First is slow start in which congestion window that will be initially 1 or 2, right? And then we will be multiplying it by 2 until threshold value. So, here you see as per receiver window that is having 64 segments, you can say slow start phase that will go up to 1 to 32 as per multiplication. Now, you see what will happen. After that, the sender window, after that, the sender window that will get incremented by 1. So, here there will be gradual incrementation. You see after that 33, 34, 35, 36 and it can go up to 64, right? So, this phase of sender window size, this is referred as congestion avoidance phase. So, from 1 to threshold value, phase is low start phase and after threshold value, you will have to increment sender window by 1 only. So, this phase up to 64, that is referred as congestion avoidance phase, right? So, I have told you initial two phases, right? Congestion Avoidance phase in which you will be increasing value of congestion window linearly by 1. And in slow start phase, we will be starting from 1 or 2. Then we will be multiplying it by 2 up to threshold value. After threshold value, congestion avoidance phase will start. Right. Now, see this is what happening gradually. But in between, always there is a possibility of congestion. Now, how congestion is getting detected? Conjunction is getting detected based on two scenarios only. For that, we need to have retransmission. One scenario could be timeout, and second scenario could be three duplicate acknowledgement. See, timeout phase, timeout phase that is referred as sewer congestion in the network. See, timeout will happen in case of 
sewer congestion. Why the reason is in time out, it is always possible. You may not be able to receive acknowledgement as well. Like for example, here we are transmitting data in between source and destination. And time out is possible over here only if this destination's acknowledgement may not be able to receive over here. Right. So that is referred as sewer congestion. And second case, which is three duplicate acknowledgement, that is referred as mild congestion. Mild congestion means there is always possibility that there can be one packet loss. And for that, sender will be receiving three acknowledgement. Right. You see, here in three duplicate packet acknowledgement, if one frame is not received successfully, in that case, it will be receiving three acknowledgement. So here, the sender is receiving three acknowledgement. It means here there is loss of one frame only. So that is referred as mild congestion, right? This is referred as mild congestion. Now, how TCP acknowledge these two issues? See, in case of timeout, in case of timeout, first of all, TCP will be dividing threshold value of that window as per WC by 2 and then it will start with slow start and in case of three duplicate acknowledgement issue it will be initializing threshold value by 2 as per congestion window divided by 2 and then it will perform congestion avoidance. How it will perform that? Let me explain you that by one practical example that will give you more clarity about it. So here I am going to consider one practical scenario in which you can observe receiver window that is having size of 64 and threshold value that will be receiver divided by 2 right I have already explained you receiver divided by 2 that is what threshold value right. So you see initially threshold value that is 32. Now how we initiate we will be initiating that congestion window by 1. So congestion window that will be 1 initially then if successful transmission is happening then multiply by 2 it will become 2. If it is again successful you will be multiplying it by 2 that will become 4 then 8 then 16 then 32. So this is what slow start phase in which congestion window that is getting scaled as per multiplication by 2 and up to what value we need to multiply up to threshold value we need to multiply. So this is what slow start phase. After that congestion avoidance phase will come in which this value of congestion window that will get incremented by 1. So 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38 that is how it will get incremented by 1. Now let us assume when congestion window that is equals to 38 at that time timer timeout is happening and in timer timeout you should know I have told you what will happen in timer timeout we need to divide threshold value by 2 and then we need to start with slow start. We need to divide threshold value by 2 and then we need to start with slow start. So see what, what we will be doing over here. After a time timer timeout, you see here we will be dividing threshold value as per congestion window divided by 2. So here congestion window was 38 divided by 2 so that will become 90. Now 19 that is a threshold value right and then we will be starting as per slow start. So slow start means what? Slow start means congestion window will become 1 initially. In slow start always remember initial value of congestion window that will be minimal. It could be 1 or 2 that will be given to you in question right. The reason is practically in TCP there are two TCP protocols. One is having congestion window is equals to 1. And second is having congestion window is equals to 2. So out of these two, there could be any case. Right now I am considering congestion window that is equals to 1 initially. In slow start phase, what we need to do? Multiply it by 2. So you will be multiplying it by 2. It will become 2, then 4, then 8, then 16. Now you see after 16, you cannot multiply it by 2. Why? The reason is threshold value that is 19 over here. So see up to 16, you can say it is slow start phase. After that, there will be gradual incrementation. So, after 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, that is how congestion window will increase, right? Gradually, it will increase by 1. After that, let us assume second scenario comes in which 
there is a loss of one frame and in that loss there is through duplicate acknowledgement as if three duplicate acknowledgement loss that comes in that case what we need to do you see in that case we need to divide congestion window by two for threshold value and then we need to perform congestion avoidance so you see how we perform that here after 24 three duplicate acknowledgement that is coming right so we will be dividing this congestion window by two so now it will become 12 and here we will be performing congestion avoidance phase so you see in congestion avoidance we need to increment this congestion window by one 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 like this and we can go up to 64 only the reason is you cannot have more than window size which is there with receiver window size right so we can go up to 64 over here right so that is how complete scenario that is happening now one more interesting case study that i would like to explain you over here that i have seen questions are coming in competitive examination as well like they may ask you how to calculate round trip time to reach wr so here if you observe see the sender is sending one segment and it is waiting for acknowledgement so this is what round trip after that congestion window that is getting multiplied by two so now sender can set, send two segments so this is what one round trip in which sender is sending two segments and then it is waiting for acknowledgement then this is third round trip then fourth round trip so in total how many round trips will happen so that is what you will have to calculate as per slow start phase plus congestion avoidance phase you see in slow start phase up to what value you can go up to threshold value you can go what is threshold value threshold value threshold value that is receiver window divided by 2 so here for this example it is 32 so here you see first second third fourth fifth and sixth so in sixth round trip it becomes 32 so here this six that is there for slow start phase for one uh, for round trip and then you see congestion avoidance phase is there in which incrementation by one will happen with congestion window so 32 34 35 36 it will go up to 64 right so 33 to 64 32 are there so for round trip time to reach receiver window how many round trips are happening 6 plus 32 means 38 so this type of questions are also coming so for that also you should be ready so for that you need to understand few basics only what is slow start slow start means we will be starting with congestion window is equals to 1 or 2 and 1 or 2 that will be given to you in question right right now for simplicity i have considered 1 then congestion window that will get multiplied by 2 right after every round trip so here you see congestion window that is getting multiplied by 2 again multiplied by 2 again multiplied by 2 that is what the case which is there with slow start up to what value we need to multiply it by 2 up to threshold value right and here you should know see sender window that will be minimum of congestion window and receiver window so here obviously receiver window is 64 so you will have to consider sender window is equals to congestion window only right and then you will be doing transmission over here so here you might be having question like how we are controlling congestion over here see here we are controlling congestion based on transmission so here who is transmitting data sender is sending data sender is transmitting data so if sender is transmitting too much data then also there is a possibility of congestion like in computer network if we all are transmitting data then what will happen there will be congestion so there has to have some mechanism which will control transmission and that is what we are doing it over here in tcp in which if you are transmitting too much data because of that as if congestion is happening then we will be lowering the scale of that window and by lowering that scale of window we will be controlling congestion and practically that is how things are happening in tcp i hope you have understood this still if anything that you would like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video